Well, hello, castaways, and welcome to Survivor Monte Carlo. Ian and I are your hosts for this game, and we cannot be more excited to get this thing started. Hey, everyone. Morgan and I are so excited to be here. Who else is pumped up? Who else is rearing and ready to go? <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. Along with Morgan and I, you will also see one or more production members at all of our challenges and tribal councils working behind the scenes to make sure our episodes come out great and make sure they are possible at all. So our goal with every season that we put on is to create an experience for you that feels as close to playing Real Survivor as it possibly can from your own home. Uh, and part of that is including uh, watching episodes back after the game is done. Um, and our awesome production team helps make all of that possible. So you'll see some of them at Tribal Council, at Challenges, um, to make sure everything goes great. And we have an awesome product to share with you guys when everything is done. So the 17 of you have been hand selected to play a virtual version of the greatest game on the planet. Shay, what do you think of when you hear Monte Carlo? Uh, I think of gambling. I think of high stakes. I think of poker, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, think of, I think of games of chance. So Julia, working with Monte Carlo and what Shay said, how do you anticipate the theme impacting the game? I feel like it's a mix of chance. Um, so I feel like there's some, there's some luck and some skill associated to some of this. So I'm excited to, to see a little bit of both. Life imitates art. Uh, Connor, do you think the players here consider themselves to be gamblers? Yes. All right. Very succinct. <laughs> Got straight to the point there. McKenna, how do you think playing Survivor online will be similar or different to real Survivor? I think online, it'll be a little bit better. I have like the weakest stomach in the world. So I don't think I could play real life Survivor. <laughs> Hopefully none of that's involved. Just wait till you get the, the little dung beetles inside your bag out. Right. I heard him crawling around in there. So. <laughs> so Parker, how do you think previous org experience impacts the game? Um, I think it impacts the game in that maybe somebody might run into somebody they already know. Um, so that could always be a factor. And I think if somebody had previous experience, they can get in their head of, okay, that didn't work that time, so got to change it now, or that did work, so let's absolutely replicate it, which won't work because this is a whole new batch of people. If they've played one game, it's a different group this time, so I think it will impact some people's minds, but yeah, I, I think it will some. So, Will, if you look around the room tonight and count all the faces that are not Morgan or I, you will count 17 people. 17 is a strange number to start a cast with. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's interesting. Honestly, I've, uh, I, I, I've been thinking about it. I think it might be some, some exile action, maybe. I'm not sure uh, what exactly to expect, uh, but with it being uh, an odd number, I think it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we start off. Now, Margaret, how important are first impressions? Do you think these first impressions are already forming, even though you really haven't spoken to each other yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can swear right now. I don't know who any of y'all are, <laughs> but I if you've spoken already, I, I have I'm starting to get ideas. And especially knowing that Monte Carlo is the theme that maybe there's some subterfuge happening, but we shall see. Well, we have one more item to get to, and I'm sure you've been waiting for this, as Shay pointed out earlier. Over the last week or so, you all received a care package in the mail. I mentioned that there was a penalty for opening this, so I really hope no one has. All right, you can go ahead and open up your care package. Inside, you will find all the items that you will need for this season. 
There are items for challenges, things like cards, solo cups, straws, dice, popsicle sticks, string, all sorts of goodies. Um, there's also an envelope that has parchment paper for voting at tribal council. There is also a copy of the rules of this game for your reference. And on the back side of that, a document uh, about filming confessionals that you can refer to at any point in the season. Are you ready to hear the first twist of the season? Tonight, you will not be given a tribe. For now, you are 17 castaways, all stranded together at Monte Carlo. This means you can talk to anyone wish at this point in the game. Tonight, there is no challenge. There is no tribal council. This is your marooning. We wanted to give you all plenty of time to get to know your 16 fellow castaways, and you will have until Sunday night. We strongly advise that you use your time wisely. This season will be full of high stakes and twists. Tonight is just the beginning of a long 39 day stay here at Monte Carlo. There was a absolutely huge, like a couple of huge twists, like right out the gate. Um, I noticed, like the first thing I noticed was I was among some DCP survivor legends. Um, there was two people that immediately stuck out in terms of Connor and Victoria. And so could just absolutely uh, understand their energy and like immediately thought these guys are gonna be absolute huge threats, Boston Rob, Harvey type threats. They're really experienced in the game and their knowledge of this game, you know, inside and out and could immediately just see people kind of flocking to them um, since they have like that experience uh, playing uh, online survivor. I'm super excited to be back for the second season because I think I have some unfinished business from the first season. Um, I think this time around, I'm going to make an effort to get to know more people in the early stages because I think the social game was the weakness last time. Well, going into the game last time, uh, last time around, I played a little uh, too hard, too quickly. And this time I'm really going to focus on letting people come to me more and um, just focus uh, on getting to know people first and getting to build relationships before I start with the strategic aspect of the game and before I start moving into making big moves and making plays and making alliances and thinking of who to vote out. And I hope that building those groundworks will help advance me in the game and will help me build a more stable uh, strategy moving forward. And then there was the huge, absolutely like bombshell, but twist 17 people, no tribes, um, was really expecting kind of your typical tribe format. And so was very nervous about, <laughs> a little overwhelmed. Um, 17 people is a lot of people to like connect with, like out the gate. I mean, it was nice scrolling through. And I think I only recognized one person, Kyle, who I barely had any conversations with and was not allied to it all in like a mini that I played. And it was just the mini. Um, so it was really cool seeing uh, all fresh new faces. Uh, I got nervous for a second because there's a lot of young faces and I'm like, oh, am I going to be the old guy? Um, but that turned out not to be the case. Like it's a good wide range. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it, it was really nice to, uh, to jump in. And it's really great to see a lot of fresh faces. Like it's, it's fun having, starting up the conversations again. So some of the familiar faces that I saw whenever I got onto the Zoom call, um, I've played like some game nights with a couple people, um, Kyle and Shay. I think I've played with Shay. He's super familiar to me, but I'm not 100% positive, but um, I'm also like in a group chat with Kyle, even though he doesn't participate very much. Um, so I kind of know him through that, but not like, um, you know, super close friends with either of them. And then um, I also know Mike. Um, Mike and I did play in pandemic together fairly recently. So we're definitely not telling anybody that we played in pandemic together. We're not even going to say the words pandemic because we don't want anyone to be able to go watch the episodes because they record episodes just like this org does. And so we don't want anybody to put that together. So like I've had somebody ask me like what orgs I've played and I lied and said that I played one that I didn't play. Um, yeah, 
basically and we're just not gonna let anybody know that we know each other so i i have not initiated any conversation i've been the one who's been reached out to a lot so i'm just following as each of those have started to come in and like see how organic the direction is um and of course be you know and hopefully i'm like making as many new friends as possible even though the backstabbing will probably start sooner rather than later so first in my little package of goodies um i had this uh, see your invitation which i'll just read it out to everyone because my camera is so blurry i can't just show it it says shh you have found a secret invitation there will be a high stakes game being played in the high rollers room tonight and you are invited to play you would like to play please join the zoom link to the you join this evening tonight at 9 30. remember everything about the season is high risk high reward so think very carefully about whether or not you would like to play hopefully we will see you there and obviously i have to go i'm just like that's just how i am i can't just be like invited to something you'd be like nah i'll pass like <laughs> like I'm, I'm just not that person well hello michael hello welcome to the high rollers room hello yes i'm excited we are very glad that you've decided to join us this evening by entering this room you have agreed to accept the consequences of your result here tonight whether it's good or bad tonight absolutely tonight you'll be playing a game of chance if you bet correctly you will win a clue to an advantage in this game if you are incorrect you will have a disadvantage at the first immunity challenge. Okay. So I can look at that. <laughs> are you betting on red or black? Um I'm gonna bet on red. As uh as they say, always bet on black. Red. Let's go uh let's go black. I will bet red. Red. Bet on black. Congratulations. At some point this evening, you will be receive, receiving a message from us with the clue to the advantage. So it landed on green, which is an automatic win. So congratulations. You will be receiving a clue to an advantage. I'm sorry, McKenna, it landed on black, which means you will receive a disadvantage at the first immunity challenge. Uh, we'll go over what that means when we have our immunity challenge on Sunday. Um, so I did, and I got a, a, a clue to an advantage. Is there any chance left? Is doubling down a good move? Don't wait for the absolutely right second to live your life to the fullest. Will you ante up? Which, um, I, we have a slight problem already. I'm dumb. So I haven't figured it out at all. Like, no clue whatsoever. So, yeah, uh, the clue itself, uh, I immediately started to pick up on the directions, um, but I thought it was like placement of a single word. So that really threw me off. So here I am, like, and, and I'm, I'm like, you know, trying to figure out which line it's on. Like, maybe some of them correlate to a line. And like, uh, I, for some reason, included double down. So I thought it meant like two downs instead of just one down. So I was starting to even confuse myself. Uh, and then, you know, luckily I took a step back and realized I saw a chance. And that made me realize like, wait a second, left, it's right to the left of, uh, you know, uh, chances to the left of left. Uh, and uh, and that kind of started to to get the wheels turning and, and figured it out from there. So it was it was a tough one, but uh, but doable. And that's that's the kind of challenge I like. So I get on a call with Mike last night, and he starts telling me about how he found some piece of paper in his package, something that sounded oddly similar to this: an invitation to a secret meeting, which I also got. I told him that I got it, and we put two and two together. Turns out everybody got this thing in their packing. So there is potentially some advantage out there because I'm pretty sure I solved this clue correctly. But when I messaged Ian and Morgan, they told me there was nothing there. So that makes me think that somebody already has it. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what it was going to be um, to win. Uh, obviously, you're you're hoping for something that's that's useful to keep you safe with 17 people on a single tribe. 
Um, and it turned out to be a 50-50 coin, which, I mean, allows me a 50-50 chance flipping the air prior to votes being read that I am immune. So while not a full idol, uh, it's a, you know, it, it, if in a pinch, uh, it'll save me. And I'm definitely willing to gamble that if I feel like at all I could be at risk. One alliance that has started to form is what I'm calling the Econ Alliance, which is myself, Nick, Julia, and Connor, because we all have some sort of finance or economic interest, which is kind of an arbitrary thing to base an alliance off of. So we'll have to see how that one goes. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Connor and then I just chatted with uh, Kyle last night a little, um, just basically kind of making a, a, a thread of everyone in the five, yeah. the five, you know, whatever this is. And then obviously I talked to Julia today and that was really well. And we just, we just shot the shit. And then we basically, she was just like, I mean, I think we got a good, you know, three. So I've been spending some time talking to Nick, uh, Will, um, I spent some time talking to Victoria, Elijah. Um, I've been kind of communicating more, not actually visually speaking with Kylie and um, Shay. I'd say in general, everyone's super nice, super social. I'm pretty intrigued by everyone's walk of life, but I think probably I am getting to know in terms of conversation, probably Nick and Will are the easiest to get along with. And then I actually had a really great conversation with Jonathan. I was not expecting it actually. And he is really awesome. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously trying to just be nice and on their radar as someone who's participating in, in there that they might be able to win over um, and not kind of, not kind of leading on to the fact that Kylie was on their Zoom call and saying, uh, oh, I think the Zoom is going to cut out six minutes before we had to have that secret invitation at 930. I'm like, I know why you're trying to end this. What you should have done is you should have just said that you had to step away for five minutes put yourself on mute, turn your video off and not leave the call. Cause that's what I was going to do. But Kylie ended the whole call for everybody. And I just thought it was very sus. I'm like, if you're going to start lying so easily, then, you know, I mean, the good thing for me is I, when I know you're lying, I can see what you're, what you do when you do lie. So kind of assessing everyone, trying to catch people in little white lies to kind of study how it works for them and what their tells are. Um, it's like gambling. It's Monte Carlo. It's, uh, it's too, like, I, I feel like if we were actually on a try right now, we'd be so good, but just the start is so crazy that I don't know what to think. Yeah. And like talking to Julie, like she's like very similar. Like I, I want to put my energy, like where it makes like the most ROI, like really fun, excited to play this game. Yeah. She's like smart, strategic here to just have fun. Yeah. But like, I'm going to like gunning yeah. for like that final chair or anything. So I think we're just like all on the same page of like how we want to play the game ourselves here yeah i think that's literally perfect um i think we've got it like i can talk to that those other two guys like all day like i think it's a good like five and so my strategy was find a couple of three to four or five people that i felt like very initially close with i felt like there was a good energy and have really bonded, uh, especially uh, with Julia. And so our process was let's start an alliance. We we're both finance, East Coast people. We think we work really well together, have like common backgrounds. And so we're looking to divide and conquer. Of I'll take four to five people, get to know them, like hang out with them. She'll take four or five people and we'll just share notes, compare notes and like, like put in good words and make sure that we're not any, uh, everyone's radar is kind of going into what may be a uh, unfeatured twist. First night, uh, we all got to meet on Thursday, and of course, Mor Morgan and Ian, our great hosts, were very tight-lipped about a lot of stuff. So <laughs> right now, we're only uh, we can only speculate about what's to come in these net in this uh, upcoming Sunday. You know, we know we got a challenge coming up, but the problem is I don't even know who's on my team. So I've just, we were kind of in like a weird one world purgatory, I guess, where everybody can talk to everybody and you want to see if you can feel anybody out, but I, I can't help but feel like some people either just don't know what to talk about, which is fair, or they're intentionally playing coy and not trying to uh, be too, too loose with information. And because, you know, you, you don't know who's going to be on your team, so you don't want to form a super deep connection if you're not going to end up on the team which i get that but it, it has made conversations a little bit tricky but i i've definitely enjoyed uh talking to everybody everybody's been very nice and pleasant so far so i think this is a good group the weirdest thing about the start of this game is that 
we are on a 17 person tribe that does not divide evenly into tribes. So there's going to be some kind of crazy wacky twist that is going to make one of us go home right away. So the relationships that we make in these first few days are going to be critical for whatever comes up because we have no idea what's coming. I can't like imagine why, because if somebody came to me and they're like, yo, look, I don't know what's going to go down someday, but like, you know, uh, so-and-so needs to go. Like they, they blindsided me. Trust me. They are a terrible person. Then I'd be like, okay, I understand that. But if someone just comes up to me and they're like, yeah, yeah, dude, like Kyle needs to go. I'll be like, why? Like we, you don't like we you yeah, definitely don't like, know Kyle that well yet. Yeah. <laughs> and if somebody says, Oh, so and so threw your name out there and it's like, oh but they really didn't, then it you know, I feel like somebody's gonna get caught. Somebody is going yeah. to to be the one to like step out there and start uh start causing some some chaos. And, yeah. Uh, and that'll flip on them quick because yeah. because like I like we just talked about, there unless there's like a past thing that like somebody like stole someone's girl or something yeah. uh, there's no if you don't know people that well there's no reason why anyone should be like that passionate about getting someone else out yet right like yeah i mean it's uh, you know it's just gonna be one of those things where it's just like i don't know right now the the person who i feel like i can trust completely is kylie just because she straight up told me that i was uh, the only person she trusted right off the bat um so i'm feeling good about kylie Mike, Shay, and Parker so far. Um, that's sort of the, the group that I'm feeling best with right now, but the game is so early that it's gonna be really hard to tell. And if anybody if anybody um, like wants to make a group and you're like, oh, who should I add? Don't feel weird. If you wanna add me, don't feel weird because I like you and vice no, versa. Sure. Anybody's and like, so oh, who should we add? Yeah. We feel good about I'm Mike, feel good about Kyle, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right. Nice to see you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Good night. Good night. So Kyle seemed just like a good dude, just kind of like loving life and stuff like that. I think that a, me and him have a lot in common um, from the little bit I've talked to him. And in this game, you need a ride or die. Like you need it no matter what. Um, and, you know, like I said before, Kylie, me and Kylie get along so well. and We're going to work together. But I need someone who um, who isn't Kylie to, to fall back on. and. Um, out of all the conversations I've had so far, Kyle is the one that I'm still like, you know what, that guy, I really want to work with him. We are kind of like low key players mm -hmm. and like introvert and like don't really mm -hmm. like want to like speak up in like group settings and stuff uh, yeah. and, and things like that. Um, so I like, you know, you can't really have too much of a plan going into the games like this, mm -hmm. but I, I came in like f feeling like I, I want to like find that one person, you know, that mm -hmm. um, that I can sort of like be a group mind with when it comes mm -hmm. to strategy and things like that, um, and like someone who like thinks the same way, um, because like you know, two people working together is a lot more powerful than than one person working alone, um, mm -hmm. and so just like being able to get that straight from the start. Um, yeah. Then, so you're the only person that I've that I've reached out to so far. Yeah, same. Like, I'm definitely one of the quieter people, so, yeah. which was like hard in the the first season, but hopefully it's better this time. Yeah, I, I, I kind of guessed that. Um, <laughs> and I didn't want like, I didn't want like something like that to happen um, to me. So I, I wanted to reach out to, to someone who was maybe in the same boat um, mm -hmm. straight away. Elijah's a problem, okay? Is he really? What happened? So I talked to Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, him, Elijah, and Victoria had like a group call. And I'm like, how is Elijah going to be saying my name when this motherfucker's out here talking to everybody? Yeah. And he, yeah, and so he was like, yeah, um, you know, like we just, we we were all like in the band. And so we like connected over that. And I was like, oh, okay, so cool. And um, I'm like, and I know that Elijah was also on that group Zoom with Shay mm -hmm. the first night. And so it makes me worry that there are like groups forming and we just yeah. need a group. I was surprised that I got reached out to pretty quickly um it was not it was um 
like kind of right away in the um, main group chat that I, I made a Lizzie McGuire reference um, it because of, there was a Monte Carlo episode in that season. Um, and Andrew immediately reached out to me. And since we've been chatting, it's like we've, we have found like a lot of common ground. Um, and he was the person who let me in on that there was the high roller scroll in the first place. So we've, he's like, not only have we, I have I felt like genuine like connection over shared interest, but also he's the first one that we kind of organically started talking game. So I'm excited to see where, where that goes. Right away after our first call got done, I uh, had to go. I had plans uh, <laughs> to go to a concert. And um, then other people started messaging in the chat, like, hey, let's, let's get another call going. Um, and I was like, shoot, I can't, I, I'm gone. And that made me fearful because um, I was thinking, okay, everyone is gonna be at this call except me. So then maybe I'm gonna become the first easy vote out being like, oh, we have 16 here. Where's the 17th person? Mike is not here. Um, but then after the concert, I was able to message in the group chat saying like, hey, um, sorry that I wasn't able to be around. Uh, if anyone's up still, I'm willing to chat, wanting to chat actually, because you know I need to make up some, dam do some damage control on missing uh, that little meetup. Um, and luckily I was able to connect with a couple people. Shay, um, Kylie reached out to me. I talked to Mike, which I found out that he wasn't at the call either, which was like, okay, we're, so we're both in the same boat. We weren't at that call. Um, the way I wanted to play this game is, you know, lie, 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 lie. That's how I tend to play these games. I want to, you know, try to get everyone on, you know, against each other and everyone on my side. But I've kind of gotten to know these people a little bit, I feel like, so far. So if I learned anything, it's that maybe these people are, you know, at least they're playing a lot more loyal. And it, I feel like this game trust is going to be bigger than a lot of other games because of the weird format that we have right now. You need trust in this. You know, if you're on, if you're on a tribe, you obviously need trust, but I feel like in this, you need to trust everyone in the game. You need to have, you need to have people trusting you from all aspects of the game. You don't know when you're going to go to tribal with them. You don't know when they're going to be able to, you know, you know, seal your fate with a gambling advantage or a disadvantage. You have no idea. So, I've just been trying to put in that little time with each person. There's 16 people. And the only person I haven't talked to on Zoom is Julia. I've had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with every other person. Uh, and what I've been doing as well has is been, um, if I like, I, I like Kylie and I like Kyle. Um, so I'll go to someone. I'll be like, oh, who have you talked to? They'll be like, I haven't talked to Kyle yet. Oh, talk to Kyle. He's awesome. Uh, predictions for uh, tomorrow night when it comes to the challenge and how we form teams. This is the funny stuff that all the viewers love in the episodes because they'll get to see how wrong all of us are and they can point and laugh just like how <laughs> when we all sit and watch CBS, we watch people in their confessionals um, uh, predict things and then the opposite happens. So I, I, I love to make predictions that are more than likely going to be wrong. Um, so... I don't know. I really don't. Some people have speculated that uh, we're just going to do like an uh, impromptu uh, tribal council with all 17 of us that, and you know, one person is going to get voted off. That's what some people have told me. I don't think that's going to happen. I uh, I don't know. We, we all paid for this game. I, I don't think the producers are that cruel. Uh, maybe they are. I don't know. I hope not. But um, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I, I've heard different rumors. Um, I've heard that, you know, maybe the uh, like top eight or nine, it's like, instead of being like a travel challenge, it's like the top, the first, it's like an individual challenge and the first eight or nine people to finish are one team and then everybody else is another team. And that second place team is gonna go to tribal. Um, I've heard that, that could be something. Uh, I've heard uh, something as simple as y'all are just going to put us in a t two teams and maybe one person is exiled. I don't know. But that person has immunity. Um, not sure if that's going to happen, but that, that's just what I've heard. Um, I, I think it'll just be, I think for sure we'll be put into the two teams and maybe just a normal way, 
like, okay, you and you and you and you are on this team, and then you and you and you are on that team. I think that's going to happen. As far as what that odd numbered person, how that plays into it, again, maybe that person's just going to be safe for the round. I don't know. Maybe that person has the chance to pick their own team, you know, and they they get to they get their fame in their own hands, or maybe they'll have to gamble. I just now thought this, no joke. Maybe they're going to go to the high rollers room. Maybe that person is safe for the round, and they'll have an opportunity and advantage, and then they'll join the losing team. We'll just have to wait and see. All right. Hello, castaways. Are you ready to get to your first immunity challenge? For today's challenge, you will be competing as an individual. At the end of tonight, eight of you will be immune and the other nine will not. These nine people will attend tribal council tomorrow night where one of them will be the first person voted out of Survivor Monte Carlo. There are three challenges that will occur tonight, an endurance challenge, a dexterity challenge, and a strategic challenge. You will only compete in one of these challenges and a predetermined number of, each pe of people will compete in each challenge to win immunity. Okay, here are the three challenges. The endurance challenge. You'll place a popsicle stick in your mouth and balance a die at the end of the popsicle stick. At regular intervals, you will add dice to the stack. If your dice fall, you are out. Seven people participating in this challenge and the four that last the longest will be safe and win immunity. So the first three to drop uh, will be attending tomorrow's tribal council. The second challenge, the dexterity challenge, you will place a popsicle stick on your forehead on go, you will use your face muscles to move the popsicle stick down until you can put the popsicle stick in your mouth. If the popsicle stick falls or if you touch the popsicle stick, you must start again. Six people will participate in this challenge and the first three to complete it will be safe and win immunity. The other three will attend tomorrow night's tribal council. The final challenge, the strategic challenge. This challenge is called Night Moves. There will be four people who participate in this challenge. Each castaway will begin at the corner of a virtual chessboard. By taking turns, each player will move as a knight does on a chessboard. One, once a space has been moved to, it cannot be moved to again. The last person who can still make a move will be safe while the three losers will attend the first tribal council. Most of you will get the opportunity to choose which challenge you would like to compete in. However, some of you received a disadvantage on night one and will be assigned a challenge after everyone else has had the chance to select. I have the names of the 12 people who do not have a disadvantage tonight in the urn. I will randomly draw a name and that person will make their selection for which challenge they would like to compete in. Obviously, if a challenge is full, you cannot select that challenge and must pick another one. After the first 12 have been selected, Ian will then place the names of the five people who do have a disadvantage in the urn. Ian will randomly draw a name and that person will be assigned to a challenge in this order. Endurance, dexterity, then strategic, as long as there is space in that challenge remaining. All right, so to recap, we have Mike, Victoria, Michael, Connor, Micah, Shay, and Andrew competing in the Endurance Challenge. We have Kyle, Kylie, Elijah, Parker, McKenna, and Julia competing in the Dexterity Challenge. And we have Margaret, Jonathan, Nick, and Will competing in the Strategic Challenge. So, Let's get this first challenge underway. My seven endurance people, you can go ahead and put the popsicle stick in your mouth. And we will give you 
five seconds here to get that first die on the end of your popsicle stick. Five, four, three, two. Looks like everybody is good. This challenge is officially on. Time is rolling. Castaways will have to add another die at the end of an intermittent time period. First three to drop will attend tomorrow night's first tribal council. The remaining four will be safe. Go ahead and grab your next die. Victoria, Victoria drops out. Drops. You have five seconds to place that second die if you haven't done so already. And everybody's good. Six people fighting for those four remaining up for grab spots for immunity. Michael Riley's dice on the move. Okay, go ahead and grab your next die. You have five, five seconds. seconds. Place. Three, two, Mike, one. Mike drops. Andrew drops. This challenge is over. Connor, Michael Riley, Micah, and Shay are immune. Mike Reich, Victoria, and Andrew attended tomorrow night's tribal council. Okay, so to uh, recap, um, we have the six of you competing in this challenge. The first three to complete the task will be safe. Uh, the other three will be attending the first tribal council with Victoria, Mike, and Andrew. Okay, survivors ready? Go. I should reset and... Ooh, Kylie. Kylie, oh. Very close. <laughs> Ooh, he has fall. So far, everyone has dropped at least one spark. Parker's part. looking pretty close. Almost there. He's got it on his cheek. It's almost one of those challenges where if you realize it's not working. <laughs> oh, Kylie Julia. Has has it on her mouth? Can she get it in her mouth? Get it in there. Julia Julia's has good. it. Looking All right, we're looking for two more. Kylie's got it. Kylie's safe tomorrow night. We're looking for one more. We have Kyle, Elijah, McKenna, and Parker battling it out for one more spot for immunity. Parker, I would say, has been the closest out of these remaining four. But it's anybody's game. Julia got it, the drop of a hat. Parker's kind of just trying to slide it in there. <laughs> He's just trying to catch it. <laughs> Looks like Kyle, Elijah, and McKenna are more methodically moving down. McKenna is their closest effort so far. Elijah is throwing his tongue out there trying to grab that, that popsicle stick. Looks like he's close. It is He's got it, Elijah. Elijah snags the last spot. Kyle, Parker, and McKenna attending tomorrow night's Tribal Council. All right, our final challenge of the night. Margaret, you can go ahead and get us started. Um, I'll go ahead and go to D3. Okay. Jonathan? G3, please. Will? Uh, let's go H7. And Nick? Let's go C7. To Margaret.
Jonathan? B2. And Will? I can't. As you said, you have no eligible moves. So Will is out. On to Nick. H6. Margaret? F8. Uh, Jonathan? D4. Nick? My final move, I eight. Jonathan. Margaret. Yeah, looks like I, I got nowhere to go. All right, which means Jonathan has won and will not be attending tomorrow night's tribal council. Congratulations. All right, Shay, Connor, Micah, Michael, Julia, Elijah, Kylie, and Jonathan have won immunity and will not be attending tomorrow night's tribal council. Meanwhile, Victoria, Mike, Andrew, Parker, McKenna, Kyle, Margaret, Will, and Nick will attend the first tribal council where one of you will be the first person voted out of Survivor Monte Carlo. You will all, however, be returning to the same beach tonight and still be allowed to all talk to each other. Good night, everybody. Initially, after the challenge, Parker messaged me, which made me feel pretty good because he was probably one of the people I felt good about going to tribal council with. And then he wanted to bring in Kyle into that Zoom call. Um, so this made me feel good because this three came from a six person group that we formed before the challenge. And then after that, um, Andrew reached out to me with a pretty convincing plan to get out Nick. Yeah, so the goal for this initial vote, initial tribal council was to build trust with the people on our, like, and we're calling it this ourselves, our initial tribe of nine people, even though we're not like an official tribe yet, but we have nine people going to meet the tribal council. And so we've been talking to Parker and Victoria as well. They reached out to me after I had jumped off that like, group of five Zoom call. And Parker was saying, hey, I would love to like loop in two more people to get a solid group of five. And Parker threw out, I feel good about Will and Philly Mike. And Will and Philly Mike, I would say, are my two closest allies right now in the game. And so I was like saying hurrah when he's like, let's loop in Will and Mike and get a group of five. And Parker also mentioned that out of everyone in our like initial tribe of nine, McKenna is the person I've contacted, talked to the least. And so I was like, oh, that's very interesting. How do you feel about voting McKenna out? Uh, because she's kind of like, it's hard to throw out a name. And so I was like, yeah, McKenna would be a great easy vote. And so we said, hey, let's get to five. Let's vote out McKenna, <laughs> build a lot of trust and have like a really strong bond coming out of this uh, first tribal council. Nick already sent a group message to me and Victoria and McKenna separately, and then a second one to me and the boys. Like already within 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I'm not included on any of that, damn. But that's why he's not trustworthy. So that's why I think he has to be the one. Yeah, like- Because I don't want him, like if he's doing that to, if, yes, I'm included in two of his chats now, right? But there could be others that I'm not included in. Exactly. Like, gosh, I, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't like, and I, like, I totally, I totally believe you. Per, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but I, I just, I can't believe that like, there's a reason to be that shady at this point. So soon. It seems very strange. It seems very like he's just messaging everybody and he's like, yeah, we should all connect when the five of us are available. It's like, <sighs> 
and, but and, he, the, the, and he basically said that to both groups yeah so basically it's one with me mckenna and victoria and then one but that one he just started like we haven't been talking three of us that's why i thought that was weird and then yeah. one with one with the boys only so i was on a call with mike margaret and andrew and that is when like we all confirmed that nick had created a group of five guys um it was nick kyle will andrew and mike um that met immediately after the challenge and he kind of threw my name out right away because he knew i didn't have an idol because i was in the disadvantaged group um and that they could create like this boys club and take me out very easily. So when I met with the three of them, Margaret, Andrew and Mike, we talked about what if we flip the vote on Nick because he was also in the disadvantage group. So like using his own logic against him. Um, and we all had similar, we all talked about, we had similar thoughts about uh, Nick from the beginning that he kind of came on hard and fast and he was being like very strategic and very much like, hey, you and you have these commonalities, let's be in a group together, but let's not really talk about anything. I mean, yeah, he definitely, when he threw your name out, he gave like all the reasons, like he was going through the whole, uh, you know, the whole shebang with the, the strategy talk. And it was like, you know, it was right after the challenge, like pretty much instantly sends the link to the five, guys minus parker um yeah. and says let's make this an alliance and i'm like okay well you know at the time i like uh, you know i was oh, cool with nick you know i'm like that's cool um but in the back of my head i'm like man this guy's real strategic he's playing real hard in forming these groups um and just from the talks that you and i have had just briefly over messenger like i do genuinely just feel better about you and I would rather work with people who I feel better with, to be honest, than somebody who I, is really strategizing hard and could screw me over. So I am, by the same token of trust and excitement for having a strong alliance, I'm also skeptical of Nick um, in the sense that uh, he does have a very good pulse on the game, much more so than I do. Um, that, makes me, that makes me trust him. Um, because I feel like if he has a good pulse, which, which it seems like he does, uh, he wouldn't be telling me uh, or disclosing what he has about the game. But at the same point, I'm kind of wary of that um, when it comes down to he's playing the game and he's playing hard. So it can definitely work to my benefit for a while, but uh, or at least initially I can take that, that risk. I don't think if we are on the same tribe, he would, I, I certainly don't think he'd make some sort of move against me. So we can definitely work together, but definitely know he's playing the game uh, and just got to be wary of him as, as much as, as much as I want to work with him. So uh, everyone else though, I, I haven't gotten any initial bad thoughts. Um, part of the reason why I'm convinced that Nick will actually be the vote is because everybody has been discussing all of the other groups that he's part of. Um, but one group that I'm particularly salty about is a econ group that doesn't include me. Um, I believe some people in that group aren't even econ majors, but I would be happy to provide a copy of my diploma. I think that going to this first tribal sets those of us that make it through up for success, actually, because there is an anxiety of not knowing what tribal is going to be like. You don't understand the communication, the frenzy that happens. It's like moving forward, I know that I'm not going to be reaching out to everybody because when Nick did that, it put a bad taste in everybody's mouth. But I think more importantly, right now, there's six of us that are pretty tight of the nine that are going into tribal. So if there's six of us and we get divided into tribes, that odds are we'll be put with people that we're with now. And we're constantly communicating. I feel like the others who are all safe are kind of just laid back. They have the night off. They're all like, they're all fine. But eight of them are not going to be safe next week. So my hope is that those of us that survive this first tribal can really come together and almost have an alliance in a way that goes past um, tribes. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining us, uh, especially those of you who weren't planning on being here tonight. Um, obviously things have changed in the game. Um, we got a message from Shay a couple hours ago that 
due to personal reasons, he had to step away from the game. Um, Shay is a great person and our thoughts and prayers are with him. Um, and we wish him all the best. And Shay would want us to continue in this game and continue in this game. We will, uh, the game is changing and you are officially going to be given a tribe tonight.